Hello, I'm Tata, and today I have for you a synchronized release with Baden of the TechRock and Advanced Automation Server. Baden is a fantastic Bedrock technical Minecraft player who has been helping bridge the gap between Java and Bedrock storage tech, and together I have for you significant improvements to the ideal output splitter that I released back in September, and Baden has been able to use this concept in Bedrock Edition to make a fantastic two-line title of Bedrock, Bedrock Shucklebox Splitter. Uh, Baden's channel and his video are going to be linked below in the description, and I highly encourage you to watch it whether you play on Java Edition or Bedrock Edition, he makes a time pass very quickly. In front of me is the previous iteration of the ideal output splitter. If you aren't already familiar with how Shulkerbox splitters work and how this design works conceptually, I encourage you to watch that video. There I explain various principles upon which this line of splitters is based, such as self-resetting variable sorters. This, this splitter in particular does have a few flaws though. The first of which is the size of the device. The device is 14 by 10 by 2, which is 280 blocks in volume, and although that fits in a single chunk, it's still pretty chunky. Now, the second flaw, which really held this splitter back, especially in lower versions, is the flashing redstone dust here. Flashing redstone dust generates a lot of block updates, and if you wanted to tile this maybe 60, 70, 80 times, or um, perhaps even fewer in lower versions, you can start running into issues where the lag generated by the block updates of the redstone dust uh, really um, affect your uh, affect server performance. Now, the third issue that the community wanted addressed is the input locking delay. So, uh, the reason why we have input locking is you want to make sure that there is only one shulker box at any given time in the in this dispenser or in the splitter as a whole. So, the way that we do that is that once a shulker box has um, pass through this hopper line here, we lock this input hopper. But the delay to lock that input hopper, which is basically traveling through this transfer pipe, coming up around here, going up like this, coming up around, it just took a really, really long time, and it took 32 game ticks, which slows down the speed at which you can input shulker boxes into your splitting array. Now, all of these problems and more have been addressed in version 2 of the splitter, which is just over to my right. As you can see, version 2 addresses the size concern. It is 10 by 9 by 2, which is about 30% smaller, and this significant size change was in part due to making initially independent components into interdependent components. For example, the synchron synchronization of the clock for the self resetting variable sorter is actually handled by the initializer circuit in the backhand side here, as opposed to being handled by the self resetting variable sorter itself. And it's just these uh, small connections that really helped, uh, helped compress the size of the shulker box splitter down. Now, the second issue that people wanted addressed is the flashing redstone dust. So if we have a look at the clock again, as you can see, there's no redstone dust in this clock whatsoever, which um, means there's no flashing redstone dust, which really helps the splitter out in a, uh, lower versions of the game. However, there is still some redstone dust in the slice uh, overall, and that redstone dust would be here and here, but they're static redstone dust, so they don't change signal strength and they don't cause any block updates. They're simply existing to provide a signal strength correction for the comparator for the self resetting variable sorter, as well as the comparator for the um, for the unstackable item filter. And the third issue that people wanted to address is the input hopper locking delay. The input hopper locking delay was reduced significantly from 32 game ticks down to 18 game ticks. Uh, and that delay was primarily reduced because the reduction of the size of the hopper transfer pipe, as well as reducing the uh, latency of getting the signal from the dispenser to the set point of the uh, locking latch. And the other key improvement that was made to the previous design was uh, back again with the synchronization of the clock. The self resetting variable sorter clock here actually only has a four game tick transition delay as opposed to a six game tick transition delay, which makes the splitter a little bit faster than before. Now that we've covered all the key improvements of the splitter, let's check it out. So in this cyan shulker box right here, I have set up uh, all of the general cases of a shulker box splitter. So that would be a single 16 stackable item, a single 64 stackable item, fragmented 16 stackable items, and fragmented 64 stackable items, and then also I've included three unstackable items uh, uh, as a part of the shulker box. So uh, let's just input it in. I've copied the MBT data, do that. As you can see, it's been set. I think I have some extra shulker boxes in here, so I'll just throw those out uh, as we get them. 
So we, I think I threw out one of the uh, shulker boxes already, but uh, as you can see, we have one snowball here, eight honey bottles there, 16 melon slices there, and one carrot right there. So those are the single 16 stackable items, fragmented 16 stackable items, 64 stackable item, and, frag and fragmented 64 stackable items, and the single 64 stackable item. And over here, we should see our three cakes as well as our cyan shulker box. Now, the next uh, uh, next point that we should look at are some edge cases. So the edge cases that we're going to look at today are an empty shulker box, a shulker box with a single stackable item in it, a shulker box with a single non-stackable item in it, a shulker box with a bunch of single stackable items in a row, and a shulker box with a bunch of non-stackable items in a row. So each of these will be testing uh, box detection, um, uh, box detection, box detection, uh, the loader, uh, loader speed, and the unstackable filter speed. Now, I do want to make some clarifications to some information I provided in my previous video on this topic. So I said that the uh, stroke box splitter can handle uh, filter items. Now, at the time, I thought this to be true, and it is true, but only partially. So. The shulker box splitter can handle leading filter items. Leading filter items meaning the very first item in the shulker box is in the input shulker box is a filter item. Now, this means it'll just filter out all of the filter items from the shulker box and, you know, uh, it'll, it'll handle it perfectly. So this brown shulker box here will split correctly. However, this red shulker box here, where we've flipped around the, um, the order of the of the filter items. Now the filter items are trailing, meaning they are not the first item in the shulker box. This shulker box will not split correctly. However, in comparison to previous generation of shulker box splitters, this splitter is filter item resist resistant or uh, filter item resilient. Now what that means is that the shulker box splitter will not uh, break entirely. It'll simply just have a failed operation. So. Uh, I will have these two at the end, and we can look at them uh, afterwards. So let's test uh, empty shulker box. Put that in there. As you can see, it'll just break the shulker box, bring it down here. However, you saw that it did not uh, drop the shulker box. That's because there is a buffer unstackable item in this hopper right here. Next up, we have a single stackable item. Put that there. As you can see, we should have a single item there and no artifacts. And uh, we should have gotten our orange shulker box from the uh, previous operation here. And the magenta shulker box is right in there. Now we will test the light blue shulker box, which is a single non-stackable item. So as you can see, no artifacts of sorting there. And we have our mushroom stew. Uh, now we're going to test a bunch of single items. And as the single items are going, I'm going to also show an input edge case, which is this hopper picks up uh, the picks up a shulker box the instant that it is unlocked. As you can see, the loader is keeping up, and we have the next shulker box coming through. And as you can see, the unstackable filter is also keeping up. So uh, we'll see our water ball is coming through, and I think it's just about done now. Now we'll look at the difference between leading filter items and trailing filter items. So this brown shulker box will split correctly. Let me just make sure I still have boxes left. I do. Uh, no harm in adding some more though. Uh, we'll put in this brown shulker box and this shulker box will split correctly. So as you can see, we are filtering out the filter item and the filter items over here are still unaffected, meaning that we will get a a proper split. And uh, I probably should have put a fewer item, uh, a couple fewer items here, but as you can see, the item transition was fine. And we will have a shulker box with filter items over here. And I just finished this operation. Now we'll look at the red box, which will lead to a failed split, but the splitter will be able to reset itself into the correct state. So I'm going to just drop that in there. So we have the uh, pumpkin pie that's just been set perfectly. That's fine. But you will see that once the pumpkin pie comes in, this filter item has been set one up and now we aren't actually, uh, we aren't merging any items. So we're going to get a failed split operation and we're getting filter items in this shulker box down here. 
So uh, now we have a failed shulker box. However, unlike previous uh, previous splitters that relied on 18 items being in this filter, uh, our splitter that relies on 19 items is able to reset itself, um, which means that the next shulker box that I put in, so if I were to put in the cyan shulker box again, will work exactly fine. So as you can see, it's just splitting the honey bottles. We should get a snowball here. So uh, also you have one failed operation. If there are filter items in the shulker box, trailing filter items in the shulker box, the next operations and the following operations will uh, be exactly fine. Unless again, they have trailing filter items. Now to the right hand side of uh, this splitter is the 1.12 version. Um, it simply just removes composters, which were added in 1.14, as well as note blocks uh, being used as block updaters, uh, because that was added in 1.13. So here we've just removed the note block and replaced it with a powered rail. Uh, here we've uh, removed the composter and put a dropper there. Uh, same thing over here, and instead of using a composter to provide the signal strength for this dust here, we use a, oh, not strange, we use a cauldron. And those are simply the modifications for 1.12. This splitter also works in 1.13 and up and 1.14 and up, etc. But uh, I would recommend using the 1.14 and up version if you're in 1.14 and up, simply because composters are a little less laggy than droppers uh, in terms of reducing uh, passive hopper lag. Now let's have a look at tileability. So here I have six tiles tiled together in an array. Um, first thing that you should always note is that this is technically too wide AB tileable in that you have to switch rail types every tile. However, you don't need to switch any other components, so everything else is exactly the same between each slice. This shulker box here is the shulker box that I will be inputting into this array. It has nine different stackable item types, so it has single 16 stackable, single not uh, 64 stackable, and a bunch of fragmented uh, of the other stackable item types, as well as three unstackable items. Uh, another thing that you should notice is that um, these tiles have been given different colored shulker boxes, uh, simply just to indicate um, which shulker box um, from uh, in the output from the output uh, you can tell which tile the uh, shulker boxes came from. So what we should expect to see is six sets of not uh, six different six sets of nine shulker boxes each and within those sets there are no common item types okay i'm going to input the black shulker box here into the system so uh, we will need six of them there we go so that's the first one it has gone into the first slice and the first slice is now splitting go into the second one second slice is now splitting third one third one is now splitting fourth one fourth one splitting fifth one splitting and sixth one splitting now uh, when you're if you're using water streams to distribute boxes um, you need to make sure that uh, you have your your break block on the ice block provided here so Technically, this water can flow one more block forward, but because there's only an ice block every second block and not on every block, you need to um, cut the water short a little bit. Now, if we look in the output chest here, uh, or sorry, that's the unstackable items. If we look in the output chest over here, as you can see, we are getting a proper split. And uh, you can just, I'm just going to scroll through here so you can verify for yourself that uh, the splitting is actually working correctly. And over here, we've gotten uh, all of the um, 18 cakes, as well as in these uh, hoppers here, there will be one buffer shulker box. Now, if you dislike the buffer unstackable item uh, in there, uh, buffer non-stackable item in this dropper line here, it's actually not too hard to remove. You can do something where at the end of every splitting cycle, you just power these um, power these pistons uh, for a 
for a little while, and that will clear the clear that last non-stackable item from the uh, drop away. Okay. Now the last thing that I want to show is over here to my right. This here is a version of the uh, ideal output splitter that uh, is designed to reduce passive hopper lag. So the idea is to incorporate as much hopper locking as possible, as well as removing hoppers where we can. This was designed by myself, Program Trouble, Barcelona, Ferigen, and Century Roll as a part of the Hammer speedrun, <laughs> as the Hammer binary speedrun. However, this here has since yet not been optimized. Um, so I w and there are likely some optimizations that can be done to this system to uh, make it a little bit cleaner uh, in case anybody would like to have a look at it. And with that, I conclude this video on the second iteration of the ideal or the improved iteration of the ideal output shulker box builder. I'm sorry that there wasn't as much redstone explanation and in-depth explanation before. The mechanics are really just the same as the previous iteration. It's just been a lot of compacting since then and uh, just some minor optimization and tweaks, uh, tweaks regarding that. Um, once again, I encourage you to watch Baden's video, which will be linked in the description below. Uh, the world download for this chocolate, for this chocolate box splitter is all, as always going to be available in my Discord server, which is also linked below. I don't believe I have anything else to say. If I do, it'll be in the description below. <laughs> um, anyhow, uh, I'd like to thank you all for watching. I hope you had a lovely Thanksgiving if you're in the United States, and take care. Have a great day. Bye bye.